Hey, hello and good morning and a new week has begun and I'm so glad that you're joining with me today. And we'll just wait for a few moments until folks start joining as, as they are aware that we're back on. Um, I just pray that this week is a week of victory for you and for us and for the United States and for the United Kingdom and whatever you're watching from. And if you're watching me just now, I sure would like to know where you're seeing us from and where you're watching us from. Give us your name and the town where you're at so we can be just enjoying knowing the fact that you're joining with us. And um, there's a share button on your screen. Hit the share button or you can start a watch party. And that means that your friends that are on your list of friends will, will be made aware and you can invite the ones that you think would enjoy what we're saying. And I sure appreciate the kind words that we're hearing from the programs that we're doing and, the, and the, the teachings and the things that were happening. Last week, Buddy Malloy was with us and we spoke prophetically. And um, that one, one of those programs had 40,000 views and we we're so thankful for that. Um, an average view, views of our, of our little hour together we have is about 10,000 people. And um, so um, to have 40,000 lets me know that people are hungry for information as to what days we're living in. And these are the most astonishing days. I, I came to America um, March the 3rd, 1969. I've been traveling since then. And I've been in every state in America except Alaska. And for some reason, I've got no calling to go to Alaska because Alaska and, and my hometown in Scotland is on the same latitude. And um, so I, I reckon if I go up there, I'll feel like I'm back home and, it's, and I'm not crazy on cold and wet weather. And that's what Scotland is most of the time. Talking of which, Alabama is being... Um, um, blessed right now by the, the, the tailwinds of the storm, the hurricane or the, the tropical storm that's going up through Louisiana. So when I got up this morning, I saw the rain coming from the bands. What happens when I, for those that are in Scotland, as it s circles around this, this part, the east part of the, the hurricane or the storm, th that's where the, the, the bands, the weather bands come. And um, so this morning, it's a wet morning in Montgomery, Alabama. Bruce, I'm glad you joined us today. Lat Latina, Latina. I'm sorry if I've mispronounced that. I'm very sorry. Bobby, Nancy, Joe, and Brenda, and Heather. Every one of you are important to us, and we are so glad that you could join with us. Christy, thank you for joining with us. And um, let me know where you're watching from, because it's good to, to know and see where you're at. And, and I, I really am blessed. When folk watch from Scotland, a lot of the names um, that I recognize from back home, it's a, it's a great thing to know that we're contacting and touching and blessing and, and having good times with you there. So we just appreciate every single one of you. I, I, I don't know what to say about these riots, to be quite frank with you. Um, it, it, is a, it is a just cause in that I believe that the black population of America historically have been um, given a, a, a bad deal. But uh, I believe there comes a point when a riot, I was watching this morning, these, these, these thugs, hoodlums, with, with sledgehammers smashing in the, the window of a bank, a Wells Fargo bank, and they finally pulled out the drive-in window, and I mean, every one of them went into the bank to loot the bank. And um, frankly, that's got nothing to do with, with right and wrong. That's wrong. And um, so I, I really pray for America today. Marina Bobak, Bobacelli, I love you. She's one of our girls that was in our work for many, many years ago. She lives in Paris. And I love you and I think about you often. And I look forward to seeing your pictures when you post them on Instagram and Facebook. And I pray for my girl that you're doing well, my darling. I look, I look forward to seeing you one day. Twyla Jazgul is watching, I hope, from Vatra Village in Moldova or, or, or thereabouts. I saw your picture, Jazz Ghoul, as you went out and um, went to an or a, a village, an orphanage, I believe it was the other day, and you knew Luzana sound asleep because it was like five o'clock in the morning. And I, I said to Nadia, she was there also. She was awake, but you and, and Luzana were sound asleep. And I thought, aye, aye, they're not good in the mornings, these girls. <laughs> but I'm glad to see you going. Eugene and Gary and Lanny, all of you welcome. We have a great program today. And let me say again, once again, hit the share button or you can start a watch party and invite your friends because today I'm going to be talking to a great friend of mine, just one of my great friends. And um, I, I know that what he's going to share is going to bless your heart. This last weekend, I went to a funeral in uh, Tuscaloosa, a friend of mine for many, many years, 40 odd years. 
and Bishop Pat Chastain's wife Deborah died and they had the funeral on Saturday and it was amazing to watch that whole family and worship God and right around her casket and, and, and worship Jesus and realize that he is the source and, and the joy. I don't, I don't know if Phil's got that picture ready. They asked me to sing, so I sang. And as I was singing, Pat stood up with his hands, worshiping God. And I thought, wow, that's a man of faith right in the middle of the darkest valley of his life. Um, he was worshiping God. Michael French is watching me just now. And Brother French, I am so looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. And I believe we are going to have a Holy Ghost time and sharing. And I want you to get on fire. Get the fire out, Michael. We're going to have a great time in the name of Jesus. Sherry and Robin and Lloyd are joining us. And I just appreciate you taking a wee bit of time out of your day to listen to what we've got to say. Because I believe that these are critical days. I believe these are pivotal days in the, in the life of America and the church. And what we do and how we act and how we conduct ourselves and how we don't fall for nonsense and have wisdom and discernment, I believe will, will, will mark us for years to come. And I really sense that, that um, we are, we are, we are in, 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 in treacherous days for the liberties of America. And I, and I think we need to be more vigilant than we've ever been before. In a couple of minutes, I'm going to introduce you to one of my best friends in the world. His name is Randy Fuller. And he is my guest, and I'm so glad you could join us today. Welcome to Daily Faith. Many, many years ago, I was invited to go to a church in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, and it was in a storefront. And I walked in not knowing what to expect, but I walked into the most loving bunch of people I believe I've ever met in my life. And in fact, one of the, one of the days I remember, one of the Sundays I was there, I got up early in the morning, it was dark here in Montgomery. It's only a couple of hours drive, but it was like a morning, early morning service. So rather than waking Chrissy, I just went in and I, and I got dressed and I put on my shoes and went to the church and I'm sitting on the platform and I looked down and I had a brown shoe on and a black shoe on. <laughs> and I, I looked down and, oh my goodness. So I stood up and I said, look, I'm really sorry. I said, just to say, if all of you wondering what's wrong with me, and I explained, I got dressed in the dark, and, and I, I had two exact, two, a, a black pair and a brown pair of exactly the same shoes. And I, uh, so that it, was, it was two different colors of shoes of the same st kind. And they forgave me, and I preached anyway, and uh, the things went on well. Randy Fuller is pastor of a great church in Tuscaloosa. Tuscaloosa is called New Beginnings Family Worship Center. In Northport, which is on the just, it's it's all the same as Tuscaloosa, and uh, they have a great church, one of the most generous, kind churches you've ever seen in your life, and I I do believe that a, a church takes on the character and the nature of the pastor, and uh, he has been a partner with us in the Orphan Sands since we began. I went there first and and shared this crazy vision that I had, and I just adopted a wee boy from 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 Romania called Andrew. And um, in fact, w one of the great um, trips of my life to Moldova was when I drove Randy across the Carpathian Mountains. And um, all he did, all he did the entire time was he held on, he was in the back seat and he held on to the, the headrest and he had his head against the headrest. <laughs> and I thought, if this man makes it all the way through, it is going to be a miracle of God. Funnily enough, he's never come back. I don't know why, but he's never come. That was his one trip. But uh, Randy, it is so good to meet you again and be with you today. How are you doing? I'm sitting here uh, laughing as I recall all of those events that you were talking about. And uh, that was one of the worst cases of car sickness I had, I had ever experienced. And, uh, I, and um, so uh, I made it, but it, it was rough. Can I can I drive around hairpin bins or can I drive around hairpin bins? 
You can drive around hairpin bins looking at the back seat, talking to everyone in the vehicle. <laughs> I will never forget. I look back, and he was sitting holding onto the two metal things with his head against the seat belt like this. And I thought, I, th I, I, may, I, may, I may well have killed this poor man. And, uh, <laughs> but uh, I, I do remember this. Randy, years ago, was in a terrible accident. A terrible accident. He was almost killed. And I remember coming to visit you in the hospital and, and speaking faith into your spirit in the darkest moments of your life. And I'm so proud that you overcame that horrible accident and have gone on to greater things in God than ever before. So even in setbacks, God can give us the strength to overcome them and pursue Amen. his will in our lives. Amen. Yes. Uh, still have some side effects of that, but we do not live with any pain. Thank and you, uh, so, um, you know, we have no complaints. No complaints. Now you've, I know you have a passion missionary-wise, and you're a pastor, but you're also a missionary. And uh, you just came back last night, is that correct? Yesterday from um, some reservation, Indian reservations. W which state d do you work in? We came, uh, we visited the Navajo Indian Reservation in northern New Mexico. And we were there from Saturday a week ago till this past Saturday. We, we, we returned home. And that, that reservation is the largest in the United States. It cover, it's, the majority of it is in Arizona. Part of it is in New Mexico, part yeah. of it is in Colorado, and the other part is in Utah. So it covers the four corners, but it's a very extensive reservation. And we were in some of the most remotest areas in the northwestern part of uh, New Mexico. We're hearing, I mean, our news feeds are filled right now with justice and, um, the, the, you know, the, the claim of reparations for the for the slaves or the former slaves that were taken to america from africa to to, to work in the plantations of america but yet the, the native indian uh, the, the american indian um is is largely forgotten in all of these moments tell us the conditions give give us a, a picture if you would randy of of how these tribes live today well, the ones in the northwestern part of the United States, there there are two types of reservations in the United States. There's the open and the closed. In the closed reservation, which is where I visit most of the time, you can only live there if you're Native American. You cannot, I, can, I can't go there uh, and reside and mm. own property. And uh, so we, you have to be invited or come in with someone that, that knows you. And they i call it uh bruce Plummer, the 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 native american indian that we work with in montana uh he calls it all of the indians and the indian reservations in the united states he calls it the modern day samaria it's the place that every person in the church today with regards to mission missions goes around hmm. and ministers in every other place and to every other people and inside the borders of our country is a third world. And wow. they were that they were put there on land that you can't grow a weed on. And uh, and said, you know, stay within these borders and everything will be fine. And um, it's just a vicious cycle of a uh, matter of fact, uh, let me just share this. The average lifespan of a male on the Wind River Indian Reservation in Wyoming is 42 years of age. Oh my goodness. 42 years of age? Alcoholism, drug addiction, abuse, poverty, despair. Diabetes, 42. high blood pressure, 42. In the United States of America. That's, I mean, we, we do mission work in Moldova. Moldova has got the highest percentage per population of alcoholism in the world. And, and, and the ravages of alcoholism in the family, f fatherless homes because the father's drunk or dead um, or abusive to the mother. In Moldova, they've got a saying, an, an, an unbeaten wife is like an unswept home. That's a saying. An unbeaten wife is like having a home that's not swept clean. 
And so the abuse, but what you're saying is that right here in America, there is, there is a group of people that, that this was their land. This genuinely was their land. And the average life expectancy of a male is 42 years? 42 years old. Oh, my goodness. And you know what God did at the Tower of Babel to stop the progress of man was he confused their languages. The yeah. first thing that the people of the United States did in trying to do away with, literally tried to do away with the entire populace of the uh, Indian, uh, Indian tribes was they cut their hair, took them off their land, took away their language, and did everything that they can do to end the, put an end to the culture and mm -hmm. gave them American names versus Indian names, cut their hair so that they would lose their identification, start looking like everyone else, forbade them to speak in their native language. And that's why the gospel, and that's why the, the Indian people are so resistant to the gospel. 1% of the American Indians in the United States are born again, 1%. They are considered by the Southern Baptists to be an unreached people group within globally, and they reside within the borders of our country. And they are resistant to the gospel because it was Christian people and boarding schools run by the church that took away their identity, stripped them up, forbade them to speak in their language, and then put them in some God-forsaken land and say, now, as long as you stay here, everything will be well. And, and they completely distrust white people to this day, if you want to talk about people that are abused and oppressed, they distrust them. They still consider that uh, when you go, when we go to try to share the gospel, that we're trying to rob them of the last vestiges of the of their identity, which is their tribal worship of God as Creator. They they don't they don't have the uh, identity of the Son in their tribal um, understanding, but they worship the God of creation. And people think that they're pantheist and that they worship trees and that they worship the eagles and et cetera, et cetera. But each of those things were simply, they realized them to be symbols yeah. of a, of a, um, of a part of the nature of God. And but so the they're not worshiping the sun. They're not the worshiping the sun. They're worshiping the God who gives the sun that makes the flowers grow. In the Bible, we talk about the wind of the Holy Spirit. We talk of the Holy Spirit as being right. a dove. We talk of the Holy Spirit described as being a river. So God, you, Jesus, and His wisdom and, and the teaching of the, of the Bible is it, how do you how do you conceptualize the Holy Spirit? And if you look at the nature and characteristics of the river, if you look at the, the nature and characteristics of the dove and the and the wind and the fire and the oil, all of those things begin to help you understand the nature of God through the the Holy Spirit. So I can understand that. And um, so what, tell me, what, what, what kind of ministry do you have there, Randy? What, what do you do when you're there with them? Well, this past trip, we went to, to build, we actually pre-built, disassembled, loaded up, and carried to the reservation chicken coops. And wow. we had a guy that brought chickens. They had them shipped in from Connecticut. He, he picked them up in Arkansas and drove them nonstop so they wouldn't die and drove them up in the nighttime so that they the heat wouldn't kill them. And so <clears throat> four weeks prior to this, they had taken food and water to these very remote uh, Indians living in the remotest part of their, their uh, reservation because they had a tribal, the tribe had locked down the reservation. No one could go on or go off because of COVID-19. They are the most impacted group in all the world with regards to the percentage of the populace that's infected really really yes surpassing even new york city <clears throat> and so oh they couldn't get God. out and they couldn't go go in so we carried them food and so one of the things that they observed was there's no sustainability here so guys said well, what about chickens man they can if we can get them set up with some chickens the chickens can lay eggs and then somebody sure. can take chickens and put a rooster with them and raise chickens and they can propagate the chickens propagate the eggs Give them something to do, have a sense of pride. So that's what we did, and we uh, we, that's we put together chicken coops and delivered them all over that countryside. And then the guys came behind us 
with a, a month's supply of food and 12 chickens for every home. Really? Well, I was, I was talking this weekend, I was talking to a young man who raises chickens, and he said if you have two chickens per person in your house, they can provide the eggs for your family. So by giving 12 chickens, you are, you are really helping them become self-sustaining. That is amazing. Get back to the COVID. Explain how, how bad is the COVID amongst them. You mentioned before we, we came on the air about a, a woman that had COVID. Well, no, she didn't, but she was so remote. She didn't know that COVID was actually was happening. Um, no, she lived no 30 miles. No electricity in her home? <laughs> no electricity, no running water. In America. And, and every place that I went to, every home, if they did not have a primary outhouse, it was secondary to back up their, their indoor jacked up plumbing. Yeah, yeah. Um, but wow. uh, the, the reason COVID is so, so bad there is Native Americans do not put their family members in nursing homes or, or long-term care facilities. So what you have is a multi-generational home that will go anywhere from a two-year-old or a suckling babe to a 90-year-old grandmother and, and everything in between. So there may be 14 people living in, you know, a 1,100-square-foot house, and if one gets it and mama gets it, there's no place to carry mama, and she's going down. And so wow. th that's, why they're mo that, that's why they're dramatically impacted. Plus, with if you follow the COVID-19 information, they sh tell you that 99% of the people recover, but of the 1% that die, almost 90% of those people, 90% of the 1% have another ongoing physical yes. issue. A a comorbid. Yes. Yeah, so these people have diabetes. These people are pr predominantly as a, as a people are overweight. Their, their nutrition is poor. It's, it's high in carbs. It's, it's low in protein. It's almost non-existent in fruit. You can't get fruit into the desert in northern New Mexico that's fresh. Hence, there's no fruit. So you have all of these factors that come together and then multi-generational homes. And if you ever, it's like, it's like putting a match in a dry um, wheat field. It's just. And it can grow fruit there? Uh, where we were, it was 7,300 feet elevation. Nothing grows and it's dry as a powder house. Oh my goodness. I did not see, Phil, this is no lie. I was there for a week. The only place that I saw that was a reservoir for water was when I left on the side of the road, there was a pond that was about the size of probably the bottom floor of your house. It's the only body of water that I saw for a week. I saw no water. I saw no water. There's no water. I saw dry creek beds and river beds that when they have a deluge, they'll fill up, but it's so dry and arid that it's immediately gone. There's, there's no capturing yeah. water. That is unbelievable. I, I know folk are watching just now and, and they're watching the news and they're watching what's going on in the streets of America. And these, these native Indians are suffering. I've never heard this. I have, you are telling me stuff right now that is completely unknown to me and unknown to, I'll bet you, most of the American viewership watching and the American public. And I know that you have an, you have an ongoing in influence in this part of the country. Is that correct? You, you, you support these guys regularly? We, uh, we try to do some work in, we do some work in Oklahoma. Those are what we, those, those tribes in Oklahoma are what the United States calls the civilized tribes. That's the Creek, the the Cherokee, the Choctaw, the Chickasaw, the Seminole, everyone knows about those guys. And by and large, those who have gotten off the reservation and are able to live, even though they may be lower on the socioeconomic ladder as a people group, they are not destitute. The ones that live, the ones that are destitute are the ones who have not been able to escape the reservation. There is no work on a closed reservation. There is no place to work. It's not like you can go, go to work. The new, the guy that I stayed with in, in New Mexico got his mail in a town that was 53 miles away. Are you kidding me? Yeah, no, there, there's not a mailbox in sight. 
No one so had a mailbox. He's going he's gonna to drive 53 miles one way to get his mail? He goes, he goes once every two weeks to get his mail. That is unbelievable. In America, today. In America. And people are crying over nothing. God help us. God it's forgive us. Listen, I, if you're watching just now and you would like to help Randy help these people, um, put his address up. Will you on the screen if you could? It It is just right. Randy Fuller. And the address is New Beginnings Family Worship Center. New Beginning. Uh, just, just put Randy Fuller, 1950 Park West, Northport, Alabama, 35476. Or you can go on the website, and I'm sure there's a place there to give as well. Um, and yes. I, uh, Phil, Philip. Yeah. Uh, this address that you have on the screen there, the, the address on the screen, that is our physical address. Yeah. Our post office, we have a post office box okay. for mail, and it's, it's P.O. It. Box 1336. Okay, so it's P.O. Box 1336 in Northport. Um, Northport. P.O. Box 13476. Okay, okay. Well, they can they can find that for me or they'll, they'll, they'll create a, a, a okay. post, a slight. Oh, the, easy, hey, the easiest way, the easiest way to give is to go to the website. The okay. easiest way to give is to go to the website and just give electronically and they can earmark it what it's for. I mean, let, me, let me explain. This is a church that gives countless thousands of dollars a year to missions. They have given us as our ministry tens and tens of thousands of dollars. Um, have been one of the main supports of our ministry historically. And, and I just I can't even describe how generous these people are. And so any money you give, any, any funds you give to Randy Fuller and say this is to help with the outreach to the indigenous people, let me tell you, every dime of it will get to those folks and then some. Absolutely. And um, I would love, I would love nothing more today. I'm a missionary. I deal with people who are, are destitute. Our kids are out feeding starving people every day, forgotten people. We go into homes every day whose husband is drunk or gone and, and uh, who, are, who are living at the, at, the, at the edge of extinction. The only food they get is when we knock on the door and give it to them. It's, it's, uh, you can't conceive it. Sitting in America, you cannot conceive how other people can live. And in, in Moldova, and I'm sure in, in these reservations, it's the same thing. In Mold you imagine you're stuck in a village and you've no transportation and there's no store. Or if there is a store, it's so, po it's so poorly stocked. And now that no one can travel with this COVID nonsense, then they can't get food in the little grocery store. But you've got no money if they have. And you go there and you can, if you know the person, you may get something on credit and you have this internal debt clock r running in your life all the time. And, and it's a widow, mostly a woman widow. Kids have gone to Europe, left their, their kids. So she's now caring for her grandchildren because our kids have gone to Italy and have got in debt themselves there because Europe is much more expensive than Moldova. So then they can't send money because they're paying their bills in Moldova. So this widow has the grandkids and she's stuck, stuck. And that's who we feed. And so with, with Randy, I, I know that what you're doing there is absolutely amazing. And I, I just commend you for that, my brother. And ask God, Father, in Jesus' name, people are yeah. watching this right now. They have the power of life and death in their hands. And to this indigenous people that has been all but forgotten by the folks, us, who live on their lands, help us to understand and recognize their need today. When everybody else is screaming in our faces about what they deserve, these folks don't even have a voice. And I ask you, Father, to speak to people today to say, listen, Randy, here's a gift. The next time you go back and or when you're supporting these missionaries that are there right now, help them understand that we love them and we care for them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I hope you do that, Amen. whatever you're watching. And um, P.O. Box, have you, have you got that written up yet, guys? Have you got, that, have you got a slate for the, the P.O. Box address? 
If you don't, I'd like you to get that for me before the end of the program. Is it up there, Philip, yet? Have you got it? They're working on it, Randy. The, 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 as, as we speak, they're... The, no, that's... There it I is. Can't, is it up? I can see it. Oh, yes. okay. It's on the bottom of the screen. P.O. Box 1336 North Port, Alabama, 35467. And I'll leave it up there for a while, Philip, so that they can they can copy that down. And I'd love to hear this week that someone sent a hundred dollars or fifty dollars or a thousand dollars. You you can you can bring love and hope and healing to these dear folks that have no that have no voice, no voice. And um, I'm learning this. In fact, that woman you're telling me about before we started today, that when the the the, the federal trucks or whatever came up to, to check on. If, if there was COVID in her home, what did she think when she saw the trucks? She asked if if uh, the she asked what was wrong, and and then she asked, uh, "Was the country at war?" She she hadn't received any visitors. Her she said, "Her my family hasn't seen me in three weeks. No one's been out here. I don't know what's going on." And then I see this caravan of trucks bringing food. Of course, she didn't know we were bringing food, or they were bringing food. I wasn't on this trip, but. Um, and they were reporting that to me. And, and, uh, when she said, when I saw this caravan of trucks, I thought something, something's wrong. And, uh, she, huh. she just ran out in the yard and, and asked if our country had gone to war. So that's how, that's the remoteness and mm. the lack that's of information and so forth and so on. Unbelievable. You spoke, um, maybe it was this morning on the, or yesterday morning on the topic of offended. Share yes, sir. What, tell me what the Lord's been putting your heart about that. Well, we came from Matthew chapter 24 when Jesus was asked what would be the signs of his coming. And one of the things that he said, he stated was that there would be a culture of offense. He said in the 10th verse, and then many will be offended, will betray one another and will hate one another. And verse 12 goes on and says, and because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow or wax cold. What we're seeing in our country <clears throat> is an increase of offense. And the reason that is happening, it's always been here, but the reason it is ex accelerating is because verse 12 tells us lawlessness is abounding. Now, lawlessness is not the transgression of human law. Lawlessness is the transgression of divine law. Sure. So what we have is people have disregarded God's moral law. What they begin to do then is to assert their own rules or laws. The yep. scripture tells us in the Old Testament, every man was doing what was right in his own eyes. When we fell into sin or, or, or when Adam sinned, the first result, uh, Philip, that we see is that Adam and Eve hid themselves from each other. Yeah, they before they ever hid from God, they hid from each other because they had a sense of guilt and shame. Their what we call now their ego had been insulted, huh. and they began at that point in time to construct to hide themselves by taking fig leaves, which today is not fig leaves. Our fig leaves today are are our education, our home, our car, our our clothes, our nails, uh, et cetera, et cetera, and so. Fallen humanity, sinful humanity has a wounded, injured ego. Hmm. And, and just in the, and so the next, that's the first thing we saw. The next thing we saw is that when God came, they hid from God. And then, and then God asked them, what have you done? Adam fessed up, but here's what he said. That woman that you gave me, she deceived me. God turns to the woman, Eve, what about it? He said, she says, that serpent that you put in the garden deceived me. Yeah. And and today that conversation is is ongoing right now, whether it be a black pointing his finger at a white or a white pointing his finger at a black or Americans pointing their finger at Indians or Americans pointing their finger at Chinese or Russians pointing their finger at Moldovans. Everyone is yeah. insecure in their person because of sin. Yep. And and we will not say it's our fault. 
it has to be someone else's fault because for it to be my fault, I have to take responsibility. And that just piles on top of my already wounded ego. My ego is simply my self-image and how I perceive as to whether or not uh, my level of importance in the world. Yeah. And so when you have people that are, and I, I, I said this on our teaching this morning on Facebook, if you're looking to me to build your ego up so that you can feel good about yourself, you're going to be disappointed seven days a week. Yeah. And so instead of what happened, instead of turning to God, who is the one who can give us a new identity and his word, which tells us of our human worth and our personal worth to him, what do we do? It says we betray one another. The word betray means to cause to be incarcerated, arrested, punished, scourged, or even killed. So it's not enough for me to blame you for me feeling unimportant. I have to now bring you down to my level, and I do that by punishing you, by betraying you. So if if you if if I feel like if I'm a black person and I feel like a white man in general has offended me, it's not enough for me to tell him that he's offended me. I have to punish him, incarcerate him, and bring him down to my level. And so yeah. I do whatever I have to do to do that. And that's what we do so that we can feel good about ourselves. <clears throat> you can tell me I offended you. But that won't do. You want to see me punished. And so what do we, here's, what, here's what's happening, Philip, and I'll close with this. <clears throat> we're going to burn the cities down, defund the cops, and we're going to have complete anarchy. So here we're going to be one day, everyone, everyone that's in the streets is going to wake up, and there's not going to be a building in sight, there's not going to be a cop in sight, and everybody's going to be sitting in the smoldering ashes of what's left in their life. And here's, here's what they're going to realize. I'm still black, yeah. and he's still white. And she's still popular and I'm still unpopular. Yeah. And he's the one that uh, owns everything, even though we burned it down and I own nothing. And I'm the one that burned it. it nothing changes. It's yeah. just that we burned down the entire country. We burned yeah. it and nothing changed. That is the truth. That, that scripture, the, the, the offense culture that we have right now is absolutely, I've never seen anything like it in my life. Because if you, if, you can, if you can shout loud enough that through your offense, then it justifies yes. anything that you do. And yes. um, what, what has amazed me, I, I forget how many genders that they, dis, they finally decided. I think it was like 32 different gender types there are um, uh, culturally right now. And yet in the last four or five, six weeks, since this COVID thing is, that, that kind of has die down because they're too busy with other things and you're you're exactly right we, we can get offended over over the even even if you're offended over something that's legitimate if if the offense isn't constructive it is destructive and i was i'm astonished to be quite honest with you i am astonished at any reasonable thinking society in fact i posted um this morning on facebook I said, America has lost its collective mind because we are seriously talking, seriously talking. Mayors of New York City, for example, is seriously talking about defunding the police. That is the most insane proposal I believe I've ever heard in my life. Because the first time his house goes on fire, I can promise you what he'll call for. But the problem is he has police outside his door. He has our men outside his door protecting him as it is. It's us. It's the local people, the common folks. When the police are no longer there, well, you're, you're taking America back to lawlessness and the Wild West. And what you'll have is yes. everybody will go to guns. Everyone will go to defensive positions. And it will make a bad situation. And this is a bad situation we're in, but it will make a bad situation impossible to deal with. And unless someone stands up with enough voice in the world that we're living in and say, boys, we have got to stop this insanity and stop all this punching and counter-punching back and forth, that you end up having a society that has destroyed itself. Lincoln, President Lincoln said, no foreign foe will ever drink from the Ohio River. If America is to fall, she, she must fall from within. 
And we are, we are watching right this minute America tearing itself apart at the end of a season of the greatest blessing that we've ever had. The stock market at its highest, unemployment at its lowest for every group. That's for, for Latino group and black group and white group and women's groups and every kind of culture issue you want within there. Every one of us have been blessed and prospered. And the, the COVID thing came up and that fell down. And now this race thing came up and, and that has literally been a, a, a blow that's knocked America to its knees. And the church, the church in the crisis moment of America... isn't even meeting together. And I'll be honest, let me, let me get this off my chest. I'm watching tens of thousands of people marching shoulder to shoulder. I'm watching t cops, there's a picture yesterday that I almost, I almost lost my salvation. This little girl screaming this close, no mask on. The cop had no mask on and she's this close and her face is blood red and she's screaming abuse into this cop's face. I'm thinking, why aren't all these folk being arrested? Why aren't these folk being arrested for COVID violations? Because they they violate, they're violating it by the tens of thousands as they march. But yet the church has got to be good boys. You be quiet and sit down. You do, do what you're told. We'll tell you when you can worship again. We'll tell you when you can get back together. Because if you don't, we're going to take your name and your number and your address and your photograph, your, your plate, your, your license plate. We're going to fine you $1,000. And the church, instead of being at the forefront of this, talking against injustice, but talking about the, the nonsense of a lawless society. And instead of that, largely silence and I, and, and I know you're a pastor of a church Randy most pastors are afraid to speak up in case they offend their congregations and it, it affects the bottom line of the church well what we need are a lot more people like John the Baptist yeah and it's not ironic that when God got ready to send his son into the world and he sent the one to prepare the way and of course, he's coming back. So much as John the Baptist went to prepare the land and the world for the first advent of Christ, so we must have the same type preachers and teachers and, and congregation, you know, believers that are going to prepare for the second return of Christ. And, yep. and if you're, Jesus said, Jesus said, if you're ashamed of me, you know, you know that saying, if you're ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you at I'll my coming. Ashamed, yeah. So, and, and to be ashamed here's what to be ashamed here's what he meant if you're if you're going to be silenced by the threat of offending someone that's what he's talking about with the with ashamed mm -hmm. someone who's been silenced by the threat of offending someone my goodness huh. that's happening you're watching that i mean i just we're, can't we're living in it I can't understand the impotence of of the of the the voice of of the the, the the God voice in America. The God voice in America. We hear every offense under the sun. I mean, everyone is offended in every direction, and and yet and yet the church is is in a survival mode itself. I remember. I don't know if you remember when Y two K happened in, in in 2020 when those uh, to 1999 to 2000. Those are younger won't remember this, but um, they thought that all the computers had been put together mm -hmm. in in their in their code that 1999 when they turned over to 2000 zero zero, it would scrub all the computers. And I remember I, I had a friend who wrote, wrote a book about this thing, and it was the end of the world. And I remember sitting in my house New Year's Eve watching Australia because they, they have 12 hours of New Year before <laughs> time zone. And I'm, and I'm watching Australia thinking, is all the lights going to go out? Because they thought the end of the world was going to come. And um, the lights stayed on. But what blew my mind was at that point, Randy, the church, instead of being in the harvest field, you know, pointing disconcerted people to Jesus, the church was panicked themselves. 
They didn't have an answer. They were, they were so concerned about themselves that they were unable to go out and share and say, listen, whatever happens, God's still on the throne. Come, come unto me, all you that labor, uh, uh, weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And it seems that when we have these crises, the church either goes quiet completely or has, has got such a weak voice that no one really hears and, and pays attention. And this COVID thing, not only did we have a voice, we, we shut ourselves down uh, because, you know, that was, that was the nice thing to do. And, and I'm watching now the COVID virus, and I, and I know friends. I, I, I know friends. Danny Dean is a dear friend of mine who, is, who has been 50, 60 days in hospital with COVID. I have a, a dear pastor friend that's been on this program with me, Kevin McDaniels, and he is, he is, I was watching him yesterday and praying for him yesterday, having difficulty breathing. So, so I'm not saying it's not a real thing, but as, as news cycles happen in America and the world, everything is so exaggerated and so hyped and hyped and hyped that what happens is they talk about a riot or a, or, or a demonstration and the rioters and the, and mixed in amongst the demonstrators. And that becomes a fuel that makes things worse. And then more people want to go and get mad and more people get offended. And they stir this thing up way out of control, my personal belief, because of a, a political agenda, because they want to silence the church, they want to silence conservative thought, they want this country to become like Europe. And um, the reason why I'm, I live in America and not Europe, because there's a difference. This country still has a, has a foundation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And, and if we silence the church, we silence the church at America's peril. And that Absolutely. is the truth. And um, so Absolutely. what is the antidote for offense? Is it, is it, is it the fire of the Holy Ghost to, to stir amongst us again? Well, <clears throat> certainly don't get me wrong when I say that if, you know, Scripture tells us if I, if I know that I have offended you, I should go and make that Absolutely. right. Absolutely. And so, for any, you know, if, if I've mistreated a black man or an Indian or even a, a fellow white man, I'm supposed to go and make that Absolutely. right. Um, but as races of people, that, that, that's, that's, that's ludicrous. Let me tell you what needs to happen, Philip, for this to, for this, for this to, uh, to be, you ask, what is the, the antidote? Here's, this is the antidote. God said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, Yep. and turn from their wicked ways. Let me tell you who's the most offended. It's God. The person that we should be bending a knee to or kissing the ring or to confessing to is God. Yep. I, I want to remind my fellow countrymen that long before we got here, long before we got here, we said it was okay for men and women to use the same toilet in public. Long before we got here, we said it was okay for a man to marry his, his buddy and a woman to marry her girlfriend. Long before we got here, we said it's okay that if a little girl comes home and feels like she's Butch instead of Betty, that we should go along with it. Long before we got here, we said it's not right any longer to have prayer in schools. Long before we got here, yeah. we stopped pledging allegiance to the flag. Long before we got here. So what I'm saying is, is this is not some novelty that's fallen out of the sky. This is what happens when you take incremental steps and surrender ground oh, to the true. enemy. And this country, this country, the last time I checked, was one of two in all of world history that was built on the foundation of Judeo-Christian Judeo faith. And we put it in our pledge and we said, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands one nation yeah. under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. So that begins with under God, then indivisibility and then liberty and justice for all. So if yeah. you get out from under God, let me tell you what goes with it. Liberty and justice for all. That is the truth. And, 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 what I, I'm watching, and this, I, can't, I can't help this thought coming through my mind all the time. Um, Planned Parenthood wrote a statement 
um, just tearing, you know, the, what's happened to the to the, ba- the black population in this country is ter- terrible, and 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 Planned Parenthood is the biggest killer of black babies in a world all by itself. I mean, they, they're in their own league all by themselves, and and they're decrying violence against the black population, and they themselves have annihilated the future of the black people. I mean, they, they, are, they are slaughtering babies on a daily basis in this country, and no one, this is, this, listen to this, this is Planned Parenthood's comment, this is their statement they made out. We are devastated, grieving, and outraged by violence against black lives. We must continue to demand accountability, justice, and an end to the inequity that continues to define every moment of black life for America from the racist institutions that uphold white supremacy. That was Planned Parenthood's statement. And I think the number that comes to my mind, I may be, I think it's like 17 million babies, black babies, have been killed by this organization. And, and they're taking offense over a, a, a dirty cop, a, an evil man, an evil man killed a man by putting his knee on his neck. And for nine minutes almost, he, he killed that man and we watched him do it. And I am repulsed and I despise it. And that man should be punished. And the other guys, I've seen video of the other guys with their knees on his back. And, and I am, I'll be first to get up and say that is wrong. That is completely against everything decent in humanity. Never mind God's laws. That's dec- just human dignity and decency. Let's face that issue. Let's take that issue on. But for us to now go from that ridiculous, horrendous act to be defunding the police in America is a step into lunacy that I that I can't even I can't understand how people would speak about it. And I watched this morning the mayor of New York City talking about defunding the police. Thirty six percent of all abortions were obtained by black women, at a ratio of four hundred and seventy abortions per one thousand live births. They were the highest ratio of of abortions in any ethnic group in the country. And this group, Planned Parenthood, is, is feigning offense when they are participating in the genocide of an entire group of people. And, and where's the offense? Where's the church standing up? People say to me all the time, oh, you shouldn't talk like this. You shouldn't talk about these kind of things because you get folk offended. God's offended. Absolutely. God, God is offended. And uh, we need to be kneeling in front of him and bowing our, our knees to him and asking him Absolutely. for forgiveness. Because this country is, is going off the end of the pier unless we pull this thing back very quickly. And let me explain to you. The media love a story. The media will push, the, will push us off the edge just to report us drowning. Yes, because they know that if they can break the Christian ethic of America and and the foundation and and, and the points of America that is that is keeping America together, if they can destroy that, the the new America that they will have will be America that you don't want and you'll never recognize and will never come back again, never come back again. I agree a hundred percent. Listen, here Andrew just put this up just now. Seventy-nine percent of Planned Parenthood surgical abortion facilities are located within walking distance of minority communities. And a a, a young girl, a little girl, a young woman, a woman that's that, that's pregnant can have an abortion without telling her parents but that school can't give her Tylenol if she has a headache without asking permission from her parents. We have turned this thing upside down. And now we're wondering, you took, America took prayer out of schools. 
we, we destroyed the foundation of what America stands for. And now we're shocked. Oh my God, what's happened to America? Go back 50 years and I'll tell you what happened to America. We took, um, we took God out of our classroom. And let me tell you something. The void that was left by God has been filled with a hedonistic, communistic darkness that you are now reaping. All the, all the educational establishments in America, or most all of them, are left-wing, liberal, everything goes, whatever happens. And unless someone stands up, unless God sends a revival... I, I, yesterday I, spoke, I said America needs an old-fashioned Holy Ghost revival. Unless we get back to God, we are in desperate trouble. Amen. And I, and I, I agree 100%. I want, Randy, time's gone. Our hour's finished already. We could, we could go a second hour on this thing. But will you please pray that God halts this, that God gives the courage to the church to stand up and voice its opinion without thinking, oh, this is political. This is not political. This is right or wrong, folks. This is life and death. This is not, this is not Republican and Democrat, guys. We are fighting for this. America's soul is up for bids right now. And unless we stand yes. up, the rioters are going to have their way in America. Not the demonstrators. I'll demonstrate against racial injustice and what a cop did to that man was disgusting and i'll and i'll march for freedom in that regard and right in that regard but the minute you start burning people's uh, uh, communities down I, I was watching the other day this black woman and i would out of reposted but her, her her language is so bad but she's out there talking to these kids white kids in a black neighborhood antifa and she's saying do you understand that you're all going back to your communities and back to your rich homes and you've come to my community and you've burned down the baker shop and the store where i go and get my, my medicines and you've burned down that bus station and in that bus station is where my, and she named this homeless man that's where george or bruce that's where he sleeps at night and you're going to go back to your communities and you've destroyed ours. And we'll never recover from this. No one cares. Drive the story. Drive the agenda. And America is, is knee-jerking. Like electrical pulses. And we respond and reacting. And, the, and if someone doesn't stand up and say, guys, this is wrong and this is sin. And we are, we are the pendulum is going so far to the other extreme, it's not even funny. Unless we, we get ourselves together quick, folks, we're going to wake up and it's all going to be gone. We will have a lawless world that we live in. And unlike Europe, let me say this, unlike Europe, this country is loaded with guns. The other night, the other night, there was a whole thing that came on the news. The kids, they were going to burn East Chase here in Montgomery. And they, they, they ransacked a, a Wells Fargo bank just about a mile from my house. And my son Andrew called me up and he says, Dad, I'm coming over. Uh, he's, because our, our house is close to where they would where they'd be, you know, traveling. And, and uh, they were going to burn houses, is what they said. And he came over and he says, Dad, we're going to defend your house. And we sat on the porch, ready to protect ourselves if necessary. And, and unlike Europe, that and if, if you, folk are watching from Europe, you're saying, well, that would never happen here. No, you, you, don't ha you can't even fight. <laughs> in Europe, you just do what you're told because the police and the law just says, this is what you're doing, and you shut up. And, and that battle's been won in Europe. But in America, there are, the, reason why, the reason why the Japanese didn't invade America in Cal California is their closest point is because they knew there was 400 million guns between California and Washington, D.C. And th they would never have made it all the way through America because man and woman won't stand for this, will not stand for it. And um, just pray. Will you pray that <laughs> pray for the peace of Jerusalem? We need to pray for the peace of America right now, that God will calm our spirits and, 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 bring, and bring restoration in relationship, in race relationships, in, in legal, in law relationships. We need a healing in our relationships. In Jesus' name. Pray Amen. for us, Randy. Will you please? Yes. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you would forgive us of our great transgressions. Yes, Father. Not just as a nation, 
but each of us individually. Yes, Lord. Father, where we have sinned, we repent. And we pray that the words of our mouth us, and the thoughts and the meditations of our heart would be acceptable unto you. For you are our strength and our redeemer. I pray right now, Father God, for the body of Christ, the born again remnant of Christ. Your yes. word says that we are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. But if the salt has lost its saltiness, it's no longer fit except to be cast out and trodden under the foot of men. If we are a city that's set upon a hill, we should be seen. A light is not lit to be put under a basket. Lord, we pray what Peter and the apostles prayed in Acts chapter 4. Lord, look upon their threats and grant that with all boldness we may speak your word. Yes. Father God, my political opinions, my political opinions are just that. They are opinions. But what bears weight and that which cannot be compromised and that which must continuously be shouted from the rooftops must be the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. And we must call sin, sin. And Father God, the nature of the gospel is offensive to those that are perishing. The preaching of the cross is foolishness to those that are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God Hallelujah. unto salvation. So Father, I pray that this afternoon, this morning, that God, you would help us to stand and to represent you with our life and with our voice, not seeking controversy and conflict, but simply humbly speaking the truth in love. And then Father God, just let you be in charge. I, I am not to be the enforcer of the gospel. I'm to be the voice of the gospel. Yes. So help us to preach the gospel. Uh, we have a target rich environment and your word to us to not be afraid or to fear not included every situation of life. It had no caveats, no exceptions, no asterisk, fear not. I am with you. So Lord, help us to not be afraid. Give us a discerning and a wise spirit. Your word tells us to test the spirits and to, to, to determine whether or not to be true by holding them up to the word of God. And Father God, I pray that you would help us to be a discerning people. And, and Father God, a, a gracious and a merciful people yes, in these trying days. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Randy, thank you so much for being with us. I hope Yes, sir. People, it's been my I, pleasure. I hope that people that want to be a part of your mission work, P.O. Box 1, 336 North Port Alabama 35476 and if you'd like to yes, help sir. him reach the native Indians in New Mexico and that whole tribal area there's a huge vast area way bigger than Scotland and England way way bigger way 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 bigger and they are forgotten and this is their land Alabama is an Indian name with Tumka all of those names yes. come from the Indian heritage that we that we have and um, yet we've we've forgot about those folks and i thank god for you rusty uh randy sorry i i thank god for you randy for the mission heart you have for these people and the mission you heart for mission heart you have for moldova and what we do there also we've just opened a, a new house um in ukraine that will house 26 girls uh, 24 girls Ooh. i'm sorry and um, that's a huge challenge we're undertaking right in the middle of this covid thing but um i know that new beginnings will be part of that miracle as well and uh, yes, I, sir. I love you. I thank God for you. I know the I know the love that you have for people, for all people, and I am so thankful to God for you. You need to check out Randy Fuller's services, um, New Beginning Services, and that is um, www.newbeginningfwc.com or facebook.com forward slash nbfwc w church and they have a sunday morning service and this man never fails never fails to present the gospel of jesus christ and he he can the best way i can describe it he is a contender of the faith he stands for the faith that we we all hold dear and cherish 
And I pray blessings upon you in the name of Jesus that God will give you a greater voice and a further reaching voice than you've ever had before. So we love you. Tell Beth we love her. Love you, you, buddy. God bless you. Yes, sir. Bye-bye. Love you. Thank you, Philip. Bye-bye. God bless you. Bye-bye. A great man of God. A great man of God. Randy Fuller has been a friend for many, many years, and uh, he stands for truth. I love it. Tomorrow, we have an evangelist, a great man of God also. I hope you appreciate. I'm, what I'm doing is I'm mining the blessings of my life. The people that have impacted me and have spoken into my life. And tomorrow, evangelist Michael French is going to be with me at 10 o'clock Central Time. That's 4 o'clock over in Europe and uh, in the afternoon. And if you, if you can, tell someone. Because I have a funny feeling that he's going to share stuff with us that will bless us immensely. I appreciate you. If you'd like to be a part of our mission outreach, I've been telling you about, I'm, I'm praying in the month of June for 100 people to give $1 a day as a monthly gift, a, 30, a recurring monthly gift, $30 a month is a, is a dollar a day, less than the price of a can of Coke. Um, even gas is still more expensive than a dollar a day. And um, if you could help us, we are supporting young people that have been put out of orphanages that are at the risk of trafficking or come from horrendous family situations in a village with, with no future. And we have a place um, called Vatra Village where they come and we put them back in university and college and vocational schools. And while they're there, they hear the gospel. And the miraculous thing is happening is that orphans are turning into sons and daughters and son, sons and daughters are turning into missionaries and they are out on the highways and byways feeding loving caring preaching the gospel orphans that had no hope and no future are now being god's hand extended and if you'd like to help us you can give www.theorphanshands.org forward slash give www.theorphanshands.org forward slash give or you can write a check to the Orphan Sands and mail it to P.O. Box 242-248 in Montgomery, Alabama, 36124. Or you can give by phone, 334-456-5544. And why don't you pray today about being part with us, of being part of the answer? You can either be part of the problem or part of the answer. And I'm praying for you today that God will speak to your heart and say, I will be a part and help these young folk find the gospel. We love you. We thank God for you spending the time with us. And I hope that what we're saying stirs you to thought. I'm not asking you to agree with everything that's said in our program. But I want this, this to stir you to thought and prayer. That we can come up with an answer and a solution to these trying times we are in right now. And... Um, on your computer, there's a thing on your screen that will say, turn on notifications. If you push that button, every time we come on the air, your phone will ding and you'll know that we're, we're doing something and you can check us out. And if you do so, you're, you're, letting, us, you're, you're letting yourself know that we're going to be part with you. We love you and we look forward to seeing you tomorrow at 10 o'clock in the morning with Michael French. God bless you. Bye-bye. For over 25 years, the Cameron family has been changing the lives of orphans in Romania and Moldova. From providing running water, flushing toilets, and clean wells, to coal for heat, new windows, as well as food and clothing, they champion the physical needs of the orphans in these broken and desolate countries. Many of Moldova's orphans are saved from the horrors of trafficking through homes founded by the Camerons, and in the process, orphans become daughters and sons they come to know their heavenly father and are forever changed by the love of jesus god helped the camerons lift these amazing young men and women out of darkness now no longer orphans they want to return and invade that very same darkness with the light of jesus christ the orphans hands equips these daughters and sons to become missionaries your monthly gift of $31 will allow us to rescue and take in more girls and boys, saving them from the hell of human trafficking. Your monthly partnership will allow us to care for those in the Orphan's Hands homes in Moldova and the Ukraine. 
When you partner with us on a monthly basis, giving a dollar a day, you will receive every 30 seconds a testimonial book of the lives changed by the orphan's hands. If you want to join Philip and Chrissy in taking care of these precious young people, please contact us today by calling 833-DAILY-FAITH. You can also give by going online to philipdcameron.com or by writing to Post Office Box 242246, Montgomery, Alabama, 36124. So many lives depend on what we do. Thank you for loving the lost. Philip would love to hear from you. If there is a need for prayer in your life and you want him to pray for your unsaved loved ones, reach out to Philip at 833 Daily Faith. We believe for great things for you. Contact him today. If you are a pastor, church leader, or business owner and would like to have Philip Cameron come and speak to your church, conference, or event, please call 1 833 Daily Faith or go to pastors.philipdcameron.com or request by mail at attention Andrew Cameron Post Office Box 242246 Montgomery, Alabama 36124